element. All right, there we go. Let's, okay, cool. Let me know when you're ready. Awesome. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about building Harper DB uh, Node.js. Um, you kind of already intro me, um, so I'll talk just a tiny bit about what we do. Um, our background, my team's background, um, is in large scale uh, software development. Um, you know, lots of crazy big data projects. Previously, with the engineering team of a social media analytics company, where we um, spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on AWS and ultimately bought a Cray supercomputer to do big data analytics. And we were just kind of really frustrated with how hard data management products were to use, how complex they were, and how undeveloper friendly. So the goal of building HarperDB was really to build a product that empowered developers, that made um, development more um, accessible um, and easy. Um, and letting people sort of focus on just coding and getting started and getting up and running and knowing that you had a lot of power behind you um, and making things um, sort of straightforward rather than making people feel dumb, which is what we felt all the time with the products we used. Um, we wanted people to just feel comfortable and confident sort of in the product that they were using. Um, we uh, like my bio said, I, I've been coding since I was 13. Um, my co-founder Kyle has been coding for over 20 years. And um, so our team has a lot of experience. Um, a lot of it was in other languages besides Node, um, but we had had really great success programming in Node. At first I hated Node, um, but then I really learned to love it. Um, at first coming from Java to Node, I thought it was awful and I was angry all the time and I wanted to kill Kyle for having switched our tech stack to Node. Um, but after about 90 days, I, I really learned to love it and thought that it was awesome. It's also super lightweight. We could develop really fast. NPM is incredible and there's you know so many usable packages and a lot of what I'm gonna talk about tonight is how we were able to scale out by standing on the shoulders of other people. Um, some of the trouble we had was we are the first database ever written in Node. To be honest, we're probably, um, one of the first enterprise line, you know, products ever built in Node. We're definitely probably um, the most data centric product ever built in Node. And so um, people thought we were insane. Um, when we were trying to hire people, I got a lot of really nasty messages from software developers who've been programming for a lot of time. Uh, one of the guys told me um, that he'd rather cut his heart out with a spoon than uh, program a database in Node. Um, we, people thought we were absolutely nuts. Now people do not think we're as crazy. They're starting to realize that um, maybe it was actually a really good idea because we have all these incredible features in our product that we didn't have to build and that were inherent in what we do. Um, we did run into some challenges around the fact that you don't have direct control over the OS and the file system. That was problematic for us at times. Although you can wrap um, C, C++ modules in Node and use those and we've done that, but that requires um, some complexity. Um, also, C and C++ are faster, um, they, but they're more complicated and they're not necessarily as scalable horizontally. And, you know, it depends on, are you talking about vertical computing or horizontal computing? What are you really looking for there? Um, and at the time, it didn't have threading and that was a problem for us, but we figured that out and we figured out how to leverage what they have now since. Um, this is kind of what our tech stack looks like. Um, so everything in HarperDB for the most part is built in Node. Um, we have a studio that's built in React with a Node backend. Um, we have Node Red adapters. Um, our product presents itself as a REST API, which is essentially just um, an express application. And that's really the primary interface for how you interact with it. Um, we use a la SQL, which I'll talk about more um, and some custom code on top of that. It's an amazing NPM package for parsing SQL. Um, our NoSQL parser is a, a custom um, thing that we built internally. We do use some drivers that were built by a third party. Those were built by CData. Those are not in Node. Um, I believe those are in C and C++. And then we use Socket Cluster, um, which is an incredible package, um, which um, originally we used Socket IO, which is what I believe Slack was originally built on. I have no idea what Slack is built on, uh, but we use Socket Cluster now, which is how we do our um, 
distributed computing, our peer-to-peer -peer, um, data management, uh, et cetera. Um, we have our storage algorithm inside the product, um, and then our clustering engine is built on Socket Cluster. Um, and I can talk a little bit more about the storage media at the end. Um, our REST API is super straightforward. Um, this is literally all the code you need to integrate with HarperDB. Um, and that was kind of the goal we were trying to build. And that's one of the amazing things about writing an application, a REST-based application is that you can make it really straightforward. Um, HarperDB is really just a set of microservices. It's nothing more complex than that. If you've built an app in Express, um, I mean, obviously we have a ton of layers around parsing and data management and sharing and CSV uploading and things like that. But at the core, it's really just a set of microservice operations. Um, one of the lessons that we learned from our last company, we did manage an API company there, and we had about 300 plus APIs. And each one of those APIs had a different endpoint, and some of them had gets and posts and puts and deletes and all these different methods. Um, and after a few years of building that, what I realized was that was absolutely crazy. Trying to document that was insane. Trying to use it was insane. Our applications broke all the time. Um, and so one of the things that people think is pretty weird when you first start using RPDB is it's just one endpoint. There aren't, it's literally just one endpoint that you change the body of your post. Um, so if you look here, sort of where the body is in this first set of code, um, you just hit this one endpoint. So literally every operation you wanted to do in HarperDB, all you'd ever have to change are these first lines of code. That's partially a sales pitch about our product, but it's also forget our product, don't use our product, I don't care. The, the other benefit of this is when you're designing an API, one of the things we learned, realized is all of these methods that you can have post, put, get, delete, patch, um, they get really complicated. And then you throw in different sort of endpoints for those and it gets really complicated and it's a really easy way to have a Rube Goldberg machine that you're putting out to the world of code that you don't know what's there, you don't know who's touching what, your sort of uh, tests might not work anymore um, and it can be pretty overwhelming. So we just made this super simple and people love it. Um, at first they thought this was a crazy way to use an API, um, but um, we've really simplified it and um, this is something you could take from us and use in any application and it's been uh, um, really helpful and a great way for people to interact with it. Um, this is what, uh, our code is currently, um, you know, a freemium premium model. So you're the first people outside RPDB to really see our code. It's not currently open source. We're planning on open sourcing it um, in the near future, um, most likely. Uh, but um, this is what our code looks like. This is me just bringing up WebStorm um, and showing you kind of our application. When HarperDB starts, it starts the HTTP Express server. Um, we see if the end user has enabled um, HTTP or HTTPS and we spin up different um, Express servers from that, we listen. And then we just basically have a, a switch statement up further in the code that determines what operation they're doing. Um, and that's really how our API works. It's not that complicated. Um, it does spin up. Um, a bunch of different um, threads based on the number of CPUs you have on your machine. Um, and you can see that in there. Um, oh, this doesn't have line numbers. It's kind of annoying. Um, I'm just realizing that. Um, uh, you see it somewhere in there. Um, and then you see the child processes. Um, but so yeah, uh, that's really what our Express server looks like when it spins up. Um, oh, and so then this is how we choose. So you post a single message to the API. We have um, a utility called choose operations. So we look to see like what operation you're asking. Are you trying to do a SQL search? Are you trying to do an insert, et cetera? We run that and we handle it with a set, standard set of methods. Pretty straightforward um, and pretty simple. Um, and it's the front end of a database basically. Um, you know, we have re rewritten a lot of our application over the course of the last three years. Um, this part has stayed pretty much the same. Um, we've probably gotten better error handling, um, added a few operations here and there, improved authorization. But honestly, um, I think I originally wrote this part three years ago, um, and it looks pretty similar to what it looked like then. Um, they don't let me code anymore um, because uh, they don't trust me, um, but I still recognize this. 
Um, I was going to have our CTO speak, but Margo uh, was worried that he would talk too much. Um, so that, that's why they chose me. Uh, um, so then our studio, this is the Harper DB studio. Um, it's built on top of our microservices. And so it's kind of cool because we eat our own dog food. And again, it's a really great way to sort of build layers of an application. It's one of the things I love about Node is how lightweight it is, but how you can easily couple together these different layers. So this is just a React front end um, running on top of our own microservices that our app runs on. You can manage your entire database in this front end. Um, React is amazing. Um, it's really sort of changed the quality of um, front end development. Um, and um, it allows us to you know, not only make our application more easy to access, but then also by building on top of this and eating our own dog food, we're then really testing our own APIs at the same point, um, which makes it really powerful. Um, Jackson, who's our VP of product, led this effort. He chose React. Um, I personally like to use Express um, and Jade. Um, uh, to be honest, that's probably not as great of an option. I will say I just find it easier um, because uh, I just know how to do it. Um, and so our, our, all our backend reporting um, is built in Express. Um, and just that's just because what I was comfortable with. Um, one of the things I forgot to mention in the beginning, the main reason why we chose Node is because we knew it really well. We got a lot of crap about not choosing Go in the beginning. Go at the time was starting to gain a lot of popularity. I think now I've, people accept the fact that Go and Node are kind of head and head. And if not, uh, Node is a little more popular. Um, but Zach, who's one of my co-founders, he just said, look, the time it would take us to learn a new language and program in something new, uh, we'd be 30% done this product already. So what is the point in doing that? Um, we can, even if Node is not as good as Go or Go is not as good as Node or whatever, we know this really well. And so we're just going to be better at it. Um, I, and we have a tendency to listen to Zach when he says things like that. So that was another major reason uh, why we chose Node. Um, this is a la SQL. Um, so a la SQL, it's on GitHub. It's an open source project. Um, amazing folks there. Our team um, contributes to it, not super regularly, but occasionally when we find a bug where there's some feature that we need um, beyond that. Um, basically, we just have a la SQL wired directly in. So when we inspect post objects, um, we then use a la SQL to parse uh, those. And then we tie them to a set of core services, which represent Harper DB. And so when you're executing a SQL search or a NoSQL search, uh, really all SQL just allows us to then transform those in the Harper DB operations. That said, all SQL has some things in it that we don't. And so there's some stuff which I'll talk about in a moment um, where we can wire in math.js and geojson and things like that. Um, so it's an incredible package. And so this is one of the amazing benefits of using Node for a language like this. If you're doing this in C, C++, yes, there's 40, 50 years of history there. But honestly, um, as technology is advancing, most of the cool stuff that you really want and need is on NPM. Um, and so being able to go to NPM and wire something like this in our project is amazing. If we had to build our own SQL parser, we'd probably still be building HarperDB. Uh, one of our competitors, FaunaDB, um, it took them four years just to get to market. We, we launched our product in um, like, six months, the beta, 12 months, the original version, and we just launched our cloud version of the product three years later. Um, and that's not because we're geniuses. We're, I have a degree in theology. My CTO has a degree in exercise management. We're not exactly like your Stanford grad, um, uh, you know, Ivy League developers. Uh, we're not geniuses, but by developing in Node, we got to stand on the shoulders of people like a la SQL developers. Um, and, and that's what we find amazing about the NPM community. Um, Math.js, another incredible package. So things like averages, things like um, uh, you know, doing different mathematical functions, data science on top of HarperDB. Again, just a package that's out there that we've wired directly in our SQL capability. You can then run these functions. You can see right here where we are just sort of extending a la SQL and bringing in um, you know, these aggregate functions. Uh, these are just some pretty simple ones. 
Um, but that's really all the code for, if you want to do mean in HarperDB for our SQL, that's it right there, two lines down, or not, I guess, 10 lines down. Um, and that's all it takes for us. And that's because uh, this incredible package exists. Math.js is an amazing package, um, not um, super hard to use um, and very powerful um, in combination with all our SQL. Um, another very cool feature building something in Node. Node is stateless by nature. It's a web application. Most enterprise um, grade applications have background processes. Um, they have um, cron jobs, things like that. They can make them highly unstable. Node is stateless. It's designed for the web. It's designed to horizontally scale. It's also designed to be peer-to-peer. -peer. And so one of the amazing benefits we got from using a Node um, framework um, is that we were able to wire in Socket Cluster. Originally we served Socket IO, but Socket Cluster. And HerfordDB just uses a very simple pub sub model, um, which is really built on the idea of almost a chat framework. Um, and so then we replicate data basically by publishing data to different chat rooms, which then different nodes subscribe to, and they're able to then be um, distributed uh, totally horizontally. There's no master, there's no slave. It's not a vertical based architecture. And as a result with node, while node may not be as fast as C or C++, um, it is much more horizontally scalable and it is much less resource intensive um, and its stateless nature makes it incredibly stable. And so you can actually, by horizontally scaling node, and what I mean by that is putting it on lots of little computers or lots of big computers, you can actually make a node framework significantly more powerful. Um, and we've done that at two companies now um, while driving down costs, while having easier development um, and, and making your life a lot easier and getting to be part of a, a pretty cool community with very nice people. Um, this is the last slide that I have. Um, so originally we started our application, we were using the file system directly. Um, this is just sort of a crazy idea we had. This is what the HarperDB data model looks like. This is what makes our product fairly unique, is that as data comes in, if it's CSV, if it's graph, if it's SQL, if it's JSON, whatever it is, we map it to our data model. It's not a SQL engine, it's not a NoSQL engine. Um, and we explode that data and store it then on the file system. Uh, originally on the file system, sorry. Um, and so we store each thing atomically. So this is the idea of you're inserting a dog. Um, and in this case, the dog is Harper and Penny. That's my dog and uh, Kyle, our CTO's dog. Um, and where you see each one of these is an attribute. And then you can query this via SQL and NoSQL. What we were doing originally was we were storing these as different files on the operating system. Um, again, we do not have degrees in computer science and Zach who does warned us that, hey, this might not be the most genius idea and we got some feedback around that, uh, that it wasn't. Um, and so we, you know, while we had amazing stability because of the file system, we had all these great functions from Linux that we could use, um, we did start to reach some challenges at scale. So more recently, we wired in a package called LMDB, which is a key value store in which we operate directly on top of. Um, we're able to implement our exact same data model on top of that. We've gotten incredible performance gains on top of that. In a recent benchmark, um, we were about 25 times faster than MongoDB on reads. Um, I can't claim, we can't claim the benefit of that. That was really LMDB. Um, but again, by leveraging the Node community and the things that are out there and wiring on top of that, um, we were really able to focus on what we're good at. Uh, one thing I want to jump back to before that, and this is just more about product development. Um, I thought the value of our product was sort of in that we use the file system and the uniqueness of that and our data storage. And I thought it was all these different things until I realized that our product, just the ease of use of our product was really where the value was. And I got very hung up on that. And so I prevented the team from making a lot of strides. But once I started to see that people just liked using our product, it was easy to use, it was fun to use. Um, I stopped worrying so much about one given piece of technology that made us unique um, and that allowed us to iterate a lot more. And I've run into that problem, to be honest, that this is my third company that I've started three times and I will probably continue to make the same mistake multiple times for the rest of my life. But it is a learning that when I got out of my own way and let them do what made the most sense for them and to advance the product, um, it was quite beneficial. And so I sort of bring that up just as a lesson. Um, the mistake that I made there.
Um, that's all I really have, though. Um, I don't know if this was helpful or useful, but um, I hope maybe you learned a small thing um, or found something you could disagree with me. Um, I'm happy to uh, our debate. Um, but thank you for the time, and um, thank you for allowing us to speak, and um, I'm really appreciative to be here and um, very supportive.